Uh, hello, <laughs> I am currently in a long distance entanglement of some kind. I don't even know if you'd call it a relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, ours is, so. Anyway, when it's good, it's Stop really... competition, Maria. <laughs> no, I don't know, it's very new and raw. I'm, like, excited but not sure, and it's all... Um, it's really nurturing and good and the best thing in my life. But the other person has a lot to deal with, particularly mental health, issues-wise. And sometimes they just got very uncommunicative for literally weeks at a time. I never want to be too demanding of someone who is finding it hard to call, but this is also very difficult for me. And I guess my question is kind of about how you can set guidelines or communicate needs to someone who might just not reply at all. Since it's the nature of the thing that most of our communication is in real time, back and forth stuff. Also, I'm aware that in some ways, I'd be much, it'd be much easier for me to form relationships with people closer to me. Mm -hmm. If it, I wasn't so devoted, pining after some, uh, someone who lives... Pining. A, pining, yeah. Is that a word? Pining, yeah. Pi to pine is like to, to long for. Apologies, we have to... Oh, I should... That's a good word. You should use it in it your just, it's like, diary. <laughs> it's like pine wood. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Pining after someone. Pining after someone who lives a considerable distance away from me. But it's not like you break off a long distance connection and automatically form new ones. I'm very aware that, particularly in my case, it's more likely to be just break off a long distance connection and just become more isolated and alone than I was before. And I'm aware that I'm stressing the negatives a lot here because that's the stuff that I need advice with. But to get an accurate picture of this situation, I should say again that when things are good, they make me happier than I've ever been in years. Like, probably as happy as I've ever been. Uh, I guess this phrasing probably make it clear that I have my own issues going on. But whatever, I'm not writing my memoirs yet. Oh. Mm. There's a few different things to unpack there. So many things to unpack there. The first thing I want to pick up on is the fact that you keep talking about how you might be dating other people. Well, of course. But it's the, the thing that, that is, is striking to me about that is that you say... But they can't. No, but that's their issue. It's like, they think that they, they won't. As in, they can't. Like, basically, they're like, I'm stuck. I, I'm either dissatisfied in this relationship or I'm probably not going to find anyone. But they say... Else. It would be easier for me to form relationships with people closer to me if I wasn't so devoted, pining after someone who lives, blah, blah, but, blah, blah. But it's not like you break off a... Like, I feel like they're in two minds, basically. They're in two minds whether to break this off or to stay with them, right? We can agree. Yeah, yeah. But the breaking off with them is not because they've found someone else they like. It's because they... If they can't... They can't imagine finding someone else they like while they're with this person. And they imagine it's only a possibility to find someone else they like if they were to break up with that person. And the thing I want to say is, if you find someone else you fucking fancy and want to shag, yeah. that will happen whether or not you're with that person. Yeah. And so that's what I mean. It's like, you don't need to... It, that, in that particular one, it doesn't need to be an either or. It's not like, I will break up with them so that I can sow my seeds elsewhere. If the sowing seed times come, you're going to be ready. So I want to find out just how far away you are from each other by choice as such, right? So, as in... The way that I have, and I'm, I'm finding the whole long distance thing very difficult. I'm, I'm, I think way more difficult, I think, than perhaps the SO does. Is this your first LDR? Um, I didn't see it as LDR previously, but it clearly was, and it crashed, and it burned, and it was terrible. Right, but that was a relationship that started off in one place, yes, and then LDR, and then same away. as with me. Yes, yes, and... um. Well, this is LDR from the start. But you know what? I don't I just... Okay, this is... Okay, Marianne is a new relationship. If we haven't already hinted at that enough. It, yes. <laughs> um, yes. I am very happy when I'm with them. I find very... I find the distance difficult. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we do is that we try and plan, like... You know, we book meetups, like, way in advance. So we have, like, four books now. Um... That's it. We're meeting. So there's always something so to count down to. That's a good point for them. There's always something to count down to. That's it. And I think that, to be fair, that was a very conscious effort from the both of us. And to be fair, I think from them more than... Because they recognize that I have this issue that is difficult for me. So they're like, okay, well, we're going to make sure we do see each other often. And so they were very proactive and like, you know, booking the next dates. As in listening to me, that that's an issue for me. And because it was. So I think if I would really hope that your significant other could 
do you dance yeah, do you, as well? How, and it's like, often it's, to see each other? It doesn't no, cover. not even the distance. Because again, I imagine, you know, what if you know we're here and there in the states or something like that? That's expensive. And to be fair, I can't even afford this. This relationship. But also, like, um, in a lot of my relationship groups, most of them are in long-distance relationships from state to state. And a lot of them, like, because you know what it's like in America, though? Like, people also like, oh, it's only like a 15-hour drive cash. And they just drive, like, crazy in America. Like, it's a whole thing. They just drive everywhere on, like, massive things. So, yeah, it would be useful to know how often you see each other. Because yeah. I think that is a huge... T- and are you seeing each other as often as makes you happy? Are you exactly. seeing each other as often as makes your partner exactly. happy? Like... Basically, like, I have really expressed the fact that I don't like this and I need to see each other, and they made an act- active effort to, like, make sure that happens. If they did it, if they were just like, mm, no, this doesn't to me, mm. no, let's do it. They'd be like, oh, I'm, okay, this yeah. is not working for Are me you a priority all. for each other? Yeah, are they making an effort to make you feel like there is continuity there, you know, that you will be together in those points yeah. that you are saying that are so precious? Because I will say when, like, you talk a lot about the, like, ghosting and not communications. I was in longest relationship with my partner for the better part of two years of our three-year relationship, my ex-partner. And I was not a massive text. I didn't text every day. They didn't text every day. We Skyped about once a week. It was not, like, the intensity of communication is kind of normalised, I would say, now more so than it was... then. I'm, just, I'm talking, like, three years ago, not, like, in the 1980s when we were writing letters. Like, we just didn't need to because we were secure in each other. And also, it was different because we'd lived together for a year before that. But we made time to Skype about once a week. And aside from that, we didn't communicate every day. And I wouldn't have liked it if we did because I've been in toxic relationship situations where there's been a kind of... A vulnerability and a sense of my self-worth being hinged on how often they reply to me. That's happened in two of my more recent long-distance relationship type things. And it felt stressful, always checking my phone, always seeing if they were replying. Why aren't they replying? Why aren't I replying? What are they doing? What am I I doing? I love that shit. (laughs) It's nice when it's cute and fun. It's not nice when you're doing it because it comes from a place of feeling insecure. Gotcha. And in both those, and I noticed for myself, when I'm secure in a relationship, I don't need to talk every day. When I am secure, when I aren't secure, when I aren't not secure in a relationship I I think about what they're doing all the time and not because I think they're like having crazy sex parties but because why is what they're doing less important than talking to me and so like you say it sounds like you have a difference either they, they're not into you sorry or you have a difference in standard about what yeah, communication looks like different expectations of intimacy precisely and I think those really need to realign like yeah. they need to align when you're like the relationships are difficult as is if relationships are difficult when you live in the same room in mm-hmm. the same flat in the same house in the same neighbourhood in the same city in the same country if you live in different countries like again these are all different like mm. you always have to negotiate boundaries and or ways to make each other feel secure i mean again like lana del rey you know wrote that whole video game song or whatever they are in the same flat you know and and she, yet yeah but but you know video i will to be fair video game fuck you for like blaming that you, but anyway yeah, he was an unattentive partner he was not in, yeah and the, the, the intimacy wasn't established there right so um again so really i think it's up to your partner to really listen to your needs yeah. in that sense because we had a question i can't remember the last episode the one before but about someone who was worried because they're the person they were dating or talking to by text they were sending emojis but then they would say they're beautiful and then they would say they weren't and it just seemed like there was a miscommunication in how they each other expected oh they were fishing for message. compliments but how would i have been, been, <laughs> been there but the point was there was just a difference in communication styles and what they wanted from direct messaging or instant messaging. And if this is something that isn't established with you two, but this have is, a conversation oh about it. Oh my god, it. emotional intelligence, man. This is all, like, this is what you need. And I, this is what I, what I recognise in this person. This is why I'm able to do this. It was wild. It's just like I'm, I'm, I'm met them and I, I, I really don't need the long distance relationship right now. It's like fucking hell. I, I don't like it. I fucking hate it. I hate it. But it's because that person is so committed to like making it comfortable for me thus far. It's working. But like as soon as they're gonna show any sort of like, not just, but you know, like as soon as, <laughs> but you know, as soon as it's, it's, there's gonna be not that attentiveness for, for, for each other's needs, it's gonna collapse. So again, you just have to really put in that effort. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, this is not it's not real. But it's not because of just the distance. You're like just like you don't you're not on the same level of like trying to please each other. Um and again, okay, so what's really fascinating here is that they're like again being like, hey, but this person out there, they have mental health issues. Again, you could be sitting living in the same flats yeah. and someone could be having mental health issues and you're gonna be like overcompensating. And it's 
bullshit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I get not I've to say that we're not always with like, mental health issues. I mean, we've all, we all have, yeah, I, I have mental health you have issues. To care. But I have anxiety hugely. Yeah, so I have people depression. also have to like care for us. Of course, <laughs> like, of course. But like, again, it's all about just like the give and take, the give and take. Then you will reward them in other ways, you know? So, yeah. If they're using their mental health issues and they excuse to be an asshole to you, then that's not acceptable. That's it. That's but that. if they're using that to explain something that's genuine, like sometimes I don't respond to my friends for a week and it's because I have been mm. chain smoking in the garage and feeling like shit. Sometimes I just want to my friends for a week because I can't really ask. Oh, really <laughs> quick, really quick love message to lads. Lads, you know who you are. Yes. Incredibly supportive to us. And I fully, fully know that I fucked up in responding to you and uh, this is again this is the sort of thing it's just like I fucked up I didn't respond I really messed this up yeah, I am um, apologising it, it happens it was just like life got in the way and that but um, but it, yeah, I would like to think that I will be better and but yeah it sounds to me like you're second guessing a lot that should have been resolved through com- communication and conversation and if you aren't having conversations that's fine and you should have them if you feel like you can't have red these flag, conversations red flag red flag bam bam like you say you're devoted I feel like we need to them. sound effects yeah. at some point. You say you're devoted to them, you say that when you're with them it's like nothing else. Those things are all great. <laughs> like but... nothing else, but then there's nothing else with other people as well. Like Yeah, it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to be in a longest relationship and if they're fulfilling your needs and needs don't just have to be physical intimacy, it helps. But they're also their your needs by responding to you. If you need a lot of communication and a lot of like self fulfillment through through conversation with others, that's valid. It doesn't mean the other person will feel the same way. Okay, I'm going to also go on a complete limb out there, but as well, like, if they understand that you're supporting them through a lot of what they're going... Oh, my God, okay, now I nearly sounded quite bad that. As in, like, what I was going to say, really, was just like, oh, you know, but you're supporting them, perhaps you can have fun where you are. But that just sounds a bit like, I don't know, like, you're punishing them, but, like, obviously there has to be conversation around this. Like, you can't just be like, hey, well, I'm supporting you through a mental health issue. It just means I'm going to, like, fuck other people. Like, no. no, that's not how it should be. Again, it's... But also, in the longest relationship, poly is something to, to consider. It's but sick. again, it comes down to trust of each other, which it sounds like you're yes. concerned about. Yeah, like, our co- yeah. Yeah, yes. you need to establish the solidity of your current relationship, and then you can think about other ways in which making exactly. it fulfilled when you're not exactly. with each other. And that stuff takes a oh, while. Wow. It does take a while. We have a video on poly if that's what you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, like don't make, don't create polyamorous relationships out of uh, spite. D- yes, and to be fair, this is why I actually said it quite badly just then. As in, like, don't create polyamorous relationships out of a place of weakness. But at the same time, if you can have an honest conversation with your partner about, like, the needs you have and whether or not they can meet those needs, and yeah. if they can say, I cannot meet all of those needs, then that is a place where you can say, you can have the discussion about whether or not those needs can be met elsewhere, because there's nothing. Like, we, we are social animals. We are not designed to have one person meet all of our emotional, physical, intimate, communicative, hilarious needs. That's just not how And humans... what if they're, like, so far away as well? And also, yeah. But, like, if I spent all of my life with one person, I'd go fucking crazy. Like, it's... Yeah. It's okay to not have everything met by one person. You need to manage the expectations of each other and what you mean to each other and see actually how realistic that is in a long-distance context. I so feel for you, like, really. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've done it twice. You're doing it now, it's... Well, I get it, I get it. It's you different it for, all the time, yeah. Because yeah. no, I, I, I don't necessarily think that it's, like, the, the LDR that is the issue here. It's more just, like, it's an inability for you guys to have these conversations. This is yes. why you're fucking messaging us and... Yeah, maybe show them this video, show them the question you ask. Because the question comes from a place of love. Yes! It's very empathetic. Yeah. It shows that you really care. You just want yeah. to do the right thing. But the, th- the fact that you mentioned several times in that question that you could be dating other people if it weren't for this LDR or that there could be potential for it. You are thinking about multiple things here and those multiple things need to be taken in hand. And I think we've addressed most of them. I'd, 